welcome back. Again, my name is Pat, and I am from the Diocese of Columbus. Let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, thank you for the gift of faith that you have instilled within us. Lord, we pray uh, for all of those who you are calling um, us to share the faith with. Pray that their hearts would be open to receiving the message of the gospel. Lord, we pray for our Bible studies that we are planning on launching soon. Pray that all those who are invited would say yes and come and join us in this study. Lord, we thank you uh, for this incredible gift. Um, yeah, the, the gift of being able to share the faith with others. And Lord, please be with us and please be with all of those uh, yeah, who we seek to share your love with. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, welcome back. We are now moving into the super practicals. So in the past, right, we started with some pretty theoretical things that started to move into a little bit more practical, kind of how to's, how to think about things. Now we're moving into the practicals. What do I do? Um, which I always love practicals. I always feel like they are the most helpful part. So we're talking about practicals, and today we're talking about how to lead a small group, right? So a small group is kind of kind of be your core, um, yeah, kind of the main thing that you are doing. While evangelization is a lot more than just a small group, and evangelization is kind of an all-encompassing thing, this small group kind of forms your, your base, right? The base time that you get to meet with people, the base time that you get to share um, about the faith with others. So small group, super important, super awesome. Um, and remember, we've talked in the past a little bit about the goals of evangelization, right? And we talked about that, the habits that we have as evangelists should be our goals to instill in others, right? And those are divine intimacy, authentic friendship, and spiritual multiplication. So these are the goals. So always keep these three things in mind when you're thinking about a Bible study and you're thinking about preparing and planning it as you go, right? So divine intimacy, a Bible study, you should be learning about Jesus learning about him and growing in a relationship with him, that's kind of very, very essential to a Bible study, right? That's what sets a Bible study apart from just a group of people hanging out. Um, authentic friendship, this is key because the more that people in your group grow, both with you as a person, but also together, right? Helping them to form relationships with each other. It's through those relationships that they'll really start to grow. Um, they'll start to see the love of Christ more often. And it'll really uh, help them to build trust so that they're able to open their hearts up more during Bible study, which will help the message of the gospel sink in even deeper. And then spiritual multiplication as well. Remember, in the long run, our hope is that the people in our Bible study get so fired up about the faith that they want to share it as well. That's a long-term goal. You might not see that in every Bible study. That might not be super apparent, but over time, that's something we want to be working towards. Right? So these three things we should always keep in mind as we are planning a study. And remember, too, every Bible study is a little different. So, you know, sometimes you might say, let's not do any content this week. Let's just hang out and do something fun. That's really a chance to grow in friendship. Other weeks, maybe you say, okay, we got a lot of content. So we're, you know, maybe there's less time to just chat um, beforehand. And so we really need to focus on the divine intimacy piece. So not all of them are perfectly balanced in every session, um, but they are always all present. Um, so we want to walk through the steps, right? What are all the steps we need to follow to have a great Bible study? Step one is preparation. Right? So even before you reach the Bible study, um, there's preparation that needs to go in so that when you get to study, it goes off very, very well. Um, and the first, uh, first piece of preparation is to pray. Right? So the first thing is to pray for everyone in the study. Pray for everyone that you've invited. Um, you know, pray for those people who haven't come yet, but you really want them to. Pray for everyone by name as you go. And then also pray for, about the study itself, right? Pray about the content that you're going to be working through. Um, you know, pray about, you know, what the Lord is speaking to you so that as you're sharing, it's not just you're repeating facts, but you're also sharing your personal experience with the content of this study too. So make sure to pray, yeah, pray about the people in your study and pray about the content and the study itself. Speaking of content, um, you might be wondering, how do I find good content? What are good resources? Now, there are a ton of good resources. We live in an awesome age of Catholicism where there is so much, there's such a wealth of resources for us to be able to use. Um, so a really good place to start is Focus, uh, Focus.org. Um, they are the Fellowship of Catholic University students, and they write Bible studies. Um, this is awesome. They have really good studies. I strongly recommend starting with, they have a study called The Crux, starting there and then moving to one called Salvation History. Those two studies are really good. They also have a really good background reading pieces for the leader. So it's a couple pages of reading beforehand, but it gives you a lot of information on what exactly you are trying to share and what the goal of the study and stuff is. So those are really good. Other resources come from like Ascension Press with Father Mike. 
um, Word on Fire, Bishop Barron's ministry, those types of things. And there's so many more out there too. There's a ton of different things out there, right? Also, you can also just walk through the Bible. So you could say, hey, every week we're going to do a chapter from the Gospel of John. Now, a little disclaimer on that one. That takes a little bit more mature, maturity from your group, and not just personal maturity, but spiritual maturity. To be able to read something, read into it, um, and be able to listen to the Lord speak to you. Um, so usually I don't recommend starting there because you want to start maybe a little more guided, and then over time, as your study starts to grow, that's a good direction you can move towards. Uh, so just a little bit of a uh, little tip for me. Um, I strongly recommend that you do not try to write your own study. There's a couple reasons for this, right? The first is that these organizations, they actually have experts whose job is to write Bible studies, which is awesome, right? So their whole job is to sit down, read the whole Bible, figure out how to tell the story that we're trying to tell, have good questions. Now, obviously, you should read through it. If you have an, a question to add that would work well for your group, obviously do that. But writing your whole study from scratch, um, it's really difficult to do. It also, you know, the first couple of weeks, it's really fun, but then you hit a point where life gets a little busier, um, you find yourself, you know, slipping a little bit, maybe not doing it quite as well, or even if you are doing it as well, it's cutting away and you're starting to burn out. Um, yeah, those things can happen when you're writing your own study. So I strongly recommend finding a study developed by one of these groups. Um, the last thing um, that I would recommend it, uh, to not lead your own study or write your own study is because you can lose the messaging. Right, so a lot of times when I see people write their own studies, it's a great maybe one-off Bible study, um, but they don't really have a sense of leading people somewhere the way that these professionally developed programs do. When those professionally developed programs, they can take someone who maybe doesn't know much about the faith, introduce them to topics, lead them along a journey, rather than just saying like, here's a good topic, we'll talk about just this for a little bit of time. Um, so again, I strongly recommend finding those um, Focus is a great place to start, but there are so many great organizations and so many great Bible study programs out there. So step one, find some content, really pray about what your group needs. I recommend the crux again, because that is the essential message, the kerygma, the gospel. Um, so it's a really good place to start for anyone, no matter how advanced you are in your faith. That's a good place to start. Step two, that is invitation. Invitation is key to having a successful Bible study. Obviously, you got to invite people. Uh, if they're going to come. Right. The first piece of advice I have is invite people who, you, who are ready to join Bible study. What I mean by that is people who have trust in you as a person and who might be interested in coming. You might not know if they're going to say yes or no, um, but at least inviting them, you know that you know, this invitation is not going to end our relationship. They know that I care about them more than just if they come to study or not. Um, a lot of times if you know someone who maybe isn't quite ready for coming to Bible study, you know, maybe try to get drinks with them sometime, or just hang out, um, maybe just have preliminary conversations about the faith, those types of things, um, but then later on invite them to study. Also, don't, don't be too hesitant though, right? Go out on a limb sometimes and say, hey, I've hung out with you a couple different times. I really think you'd enjoy coming to this Bible study. Would you want to come? Um, so that's, yeah, really big too. So don't be too timid, but also if you know of someone who is an absolute no, maybe spend a little bit more time um, with them before making that invitation over to Bible study. Another thing is a personal invite is really, really important, especially as you begin your Bible study. A lot of times people just collect a bunch of numbers, throw them in a group chat, text out a big, big group message, um, and then there's 10 people in the group message, but only two ever like react to it or respond to it. Um, so that in the long run, as people become more committed to Bible study, group messages are a great way to remind people of when Bible study is. But as you make the first invitation, and really the first couple of invitations, kind of the first four. Once someone comes four times, they're usually pretty committed. But the first four, you really want to make a personal invitation. So whether that's a personal text that says, hey, I would love to have you come and join. Um, please consider coming. Or even better, if you see them in person and be able to give that in-person personal invitation to come and join you. Um, I also recommend make your invitation early and do a follow-up. So let's say your Bible study is on Thursday night. Maybe you send out a message on Monday or Tuesday saying, hey, don't forget, Thursday night, Bible study is going to be awesome. And then another one Thursday morning that says, can't wait for Bible study tonight. The reason for that is if you wait too long, then someone might accidentally schedule something over it. But if you message too early, then they might just forget about it. So you want to have kind of that the best of both worlds where you can 
you know, get on their calendar early enough before they, uh, before they over schedule, but also remind them at the last minute so they don't forget that it's happening. Um, and then also when you're making an invitation, you know, tell them why you want them there. Um, don't just say, hey, you should come to Bible study. It's fun. Say, hey, it would be so great to have you at Bible study. Um, it would mean a lot to me if you came. I think you would really enjoy it. Um, I noticed you've been interested in faith-related questions. You know, something like that to say, I think this would be something good for you. It's not just a generic random thing, but I would really love for you to come and it'd be great to have you there. So step two, invitations. Step three is preparing your environment. So where are you going to host is a big question for leading your Bible study. Obviously, homes are a great option. If you can host it at your house, that's great. But I know also that there's a lot of difficulties sometimes. Maybe you don't have a big space. Um, maybe your house is busy if you have roommates. Um, whatever it may be, um, that might be difficult. So if you're not able to do your house, think through kind of what, what type of an environment you like. A lot of times hosting at a church isn't the best idea. And that's because our hope is that we would be attracting people who maybe are a little timid about the faith, right? Now, if church is your only option, great. Use your church. That's a great option. But if you could find somewhere else that's a little bit more welcoming so that someone can come without feeling like they're making a big religious commitment by coming. Also think through where do people in your Bible study live um, and what means of transportation do they have? So if you're working with college students and they don't have cars, don't plan it two miles away from campus. Or if you do plan it that far away, make sure you have ride options figured out. Um, you know, if you go to a parish that's far away from your house and most of the people that you have invited to Bible study go to your parish, maybe find something closer to that rather than having them drive all the way to you. So you can find your house, um, you can do a brewery or a good restaurant or something like that too, um, that can work. But make sure that the, the space is very clean. Um, I always recommend having some sort of a snack as well, just something for people to munch on. Maybe have water as well. People always, you know, get thirsty too. Um, and then also make sure you have enough chairs or at least enough places to sit. So it's always kind of funny when, you know, you don't, haven't thought through where people are going to sit and then everyone's sitting on the floor or something. Now, a couple of people on the floor, totally fine. But hopefully you have some sort of a general um, way of getting everyone to sit. So that's kind of step three, which is preparing your environment. And then step four, Finally, we're actually at hosting the Bible study, right? So this is awesome. This is where you finally get everyone together, um, bring them in, um, yeah, and get to share whatever you have prepared with them, which is great. Um, now, I have a few general tips on, yeah, just making sure that your study goes pretty well. The first thing that I would say is start with like some sort of a warm-up question or warm-up, not activity, but kind of, right? A good one to do is like highs and lows with everyone. So what's something really good that happened this week and what's maybe a challenge from this last week. Um, the reason that we start with this is because it helps people kind of get into the zone of talking. Right? If you go straight to the faith related questions and ask them those, sometimes that's difficult for people. So you kind of want to warm them up to the conversation. So some Bible study um, plans already have kind of warm up questions built in. Other ones don't and you can do those highs and lows or find another icebreaker type thing that you can do consistently to help them learn. And then start your Bible study. Um, now, depending on which kind of study you pick, some of them, you might be more of a leader, like, hey, I'm leading, everyone listen to me. Some of them might be more of a collaborative group discussion, whichever it may be. Um, you know, you kind of have a role in helping that conversation move along. And you kind of have three different roles. So the first role that you have um, is to ensure that this conversation stays on track, right? So you can, you know, make sure that it kind of stays going. We've all been in those conversations, those big groups before where like you just start talking about one thing and then you wind up way out in left field, completely forgetting everything that you're talking about, right? So you know exactly what you're trying to get done within this study. You've prepared content and you know how long it's going to take to get through it. Um, so obviously you know, you know where you're trying to go. So if you notice, wow, we're a half hour in um, and we've barely even started, then that's a chance to say, okay, everyone, this is a great conversation, but let's get back on track. Another thing is to kind of moderate the group's participation. Now, every time you have a Bible study, every group has people in it that love to share every single time and other people who are really internal processors and who rarely share. And that's okay. Not everyone's going to share at the same level. But what you want to make sure of is that um, the people who tend to talk all the time aren't walking over the people who don't talk very often. This is a group Bible study. Everyone's supposed to be a part of it. So even if someone doesn't comment as much, you still want to make sure that there's room for them. So the quieter members of your group, you know, watch out, look at, um, kind of keep your eyes on them a little bit, see if they have something to say. And if they do, then maybe cut in and say, oh, I think this person might have something to say. 
Um, or if someone's being really chatty, just say, hey, thank you so much. I love your comments. Um, let's see if anyone else has anything to say um, about this next question. Um, so yeah, kind of moderate the group, make sure that it stays on track, make sure that everyone um, is participating and is engaged. Um, yeah, and then just walk through your study um, and kind of keep your eyes out for anything, or your ears out rather, for anything that you might hear that is interesting, right? Maybe someone really opens up for the first time or maybe someone shares a unique personal story, whatever it might be. Kind of just keep your ears out for those types of things because that leads us into step five, which is good follow-up. So usually you want to thank everyone for coming, maybe right after say, oh my gosh, thank you everyone for coming. Can't wait for next week. I'll see you then. Um, but then also, if someone from your Bible study had a profound moment, profound encounter, um, if you saw maybe the wheels really churning in their head, you really want to reach out to that person in that time and say, hey, it really seemed like something was clicking for you during that Bible study. Do you want to get together and talk about it sometime? Right? The devil, um, he's, he's our enemy, right? And he notices when, uh, when people are starting to move towards the faith, and he'll do anything to try to stop it. Right? If you've ever read the screw tape letters, there's a time where um, these, these two demons talking about how to trick humans, and um, they're talking about this guy who was starting to think about God and was starting to think about life, and um, the demon just jumped in and reminded him that he's hungry. So he goes, oh, I'm hungry. I should go get some food rather than thinking about those things, right? So the devil is tricky and cunning, and he wants to, wants to distract us whenever those moments um, kind of pop up. So when you see those moments with people, you know, use that to jump on those and say, hey, let's cultivate that moment before the devil gets in and tries to, you know, pour water on it, right? So follow up with people if they've had a profound experience um, and just continue to invite and then run it all back, right? Week after week, same thing. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how we do it. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, this has been, yeah, just a conversation about the practicals of how to lead Bible study. One thing I want to note as well before we head out is that leading a Bible study is a skill. And like any other skill, it takes time and it takes, takes practice. Um, so your first Bible study, yeah, it might be a little awkward. You might make some awkward mistakes or you might not be ready to jump in or whatever it might be, right? That's an opportunity to grow. You're not going to be perfect at leading Bible studies your first go or even your fifth go. It takes a lot of time. So always commit to it. Remember that you know, people really want to know about God. So even if a Bible study doesn't go perfectly, even if you got very distracted or your group, group got off the rails, it's okay. Just come back, try again next week, um, and just continue to grow in these skills over time. So thank you again so much for joining. God bless.